Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Everyone sit down, please, please. We gotta get out of here now. So thank you, Alex, for that, uh, I guess, wonderful introduction, a <laughs> colorful story. And thank all of you in this room for making this gala, a sold out gala, such an incredible success. It is a tremendous honor for me to be here and share the stage with the other honorees today. I've been make, making some mental notes though, never follow Michelle's honor at an award ceremony, or follow Julie after she sings, or stand in the way of the main event, Lee Jung Jae. <laughs> so I will try to keep my comments quite brief this evening. So along with my wonderful wife Janice, who's here today, I am so proud. to be a long-term supporter, advocate, and really a cheerleader for KACF. I share this honor with her and with my entire family, many of whom are here tonight. My beloved parents, two of my children, my two older brothers and their families. Their love and support have made me who I am today, and that's what keeps me going every day. I'd also like to thank my many friends, business associates, my partners at the Asian American Foundation, and my amazing colleagues at KKR. I think we have more than 80 of you here in the room tonight. I think half of you should be actually in the office working, but we'll talk about that later. And of course, I want to salute KACF's co-founder and president, Kyung Yoon. She is the organization's driving force and its heart and soul. KACF could not have achieved the incredible success and growth it has without her. And on behalf of the 900 plus Korean Americans and allies in this room, I know we are all looking forward to partnering with Kyung and her team in reaching even higher to support the Korean American community. KACF's mission means a lot to me personally. I'm a first-generation Korean American Im immigrant. I was born in Seoul and moved to Flushing, Queens in the 1970s. When we arrived, my parents didn't speak any English. <laughs> Go Queens. Yeah. <laughs> I went to public school out on Long Island. I grew up in a neighborhood with virtually no Asians. And that was a time where racial slurs and bullying were all too common. And I remember, like many of you in this room, growing up in America feeling like an outsider. The focus was on assimilation. It was focused on fitting in and not drawing attention to yourself. I grew up in an America when it was definitively not cool to be a Korean. An America which predates BTS, <laughs> K-pop, the explosion of Korean dramas, Chloe Kim, Michelin star Korean barbecue restaurants. Yes, Simon, that's you. And of course, the Squid Games. And while they were difficult times growing up, I also remember the strength and support we received as a family from a nascent Korean American community through our church and a small circle of Korean families. To me, that is what KACF represents. They are the glue that binds the Korean American community in New York City. They are the connective tissue which allows dozens and dozens of community organizations to thrive. And in periods of stress and distress, they're the warm security blanket that our community hugs tightly. And I was actually first introduced to KACF by my mother, who's a Presbyterian minister and a social worker. She spent, yes please.
she has spent her entire life helping other Asian Americans, including as a volunteer at the Korean American Family Services Center, a longtime grantee partner of KACF. She provided counseling and legal services to domestic violence victims, women who did not know how to access social services, nor to speak to counselors, therapists, or lawyers. And through my mother's work, the shortcomings and challenges facing our community became very real. And the sad reality is many in our community are not doing as well as we hope. Asian Americans have the highest poverty rates of any racial group among the elderly in New York City. Many are first-generation immigrants like me and small business owners. They're not part of large companies with pension plans. And when they close up shop and retire, they often have no savings or safety net. And because of language and cultural barriers, it can be incredibly difficult to access social services and government relief funds. This community was particularly hard hit during COVID. Together, we can and we must help fix that. And the generation that came before us, they paved the way for Korean Americans to reach important leadership roles in America today. Successful leaders from all fields must now step up and do the positive work that our community needs. And it's all of us in this room that need to do it. None of us can do this alone. So I'm gonna close with a simple ask for everyone in this room. Please continue to support the Korean American Community Foundation in any way possible. It's by standing together and helping each other that we can most successfully and collectively realize the American dream. Thank you.